welcome back to Linux Wednesdays where we look at Linux tips and tricks on a Wednesday. Last week's video I showed you how to send data through your terminal onto another computer and we used the vintage BBC Micro. We was able to send it some basic listings and play a game of uh, bat and ball. We, we used a COM port USB adapter and a BBC Micro RS432 to COM port adapter. And if you get garbled text just turn the cable around the other way on the BBC because it can fit in both ways. This week's video I'm going to show you how you can log in to your Linux box through a remote computer and we're going to be using the BBC Micro connected via the RS432 and COM port adapter and we're going to log into the Linux terminal from the BBC using a command called systemctl. If I go to the terminal and we do a man systemctl, it says systemctl, control the system, system and service manager. Now if we clear the screen and we set up the COM port like we did last week to 4800 board. Do a sudo stty minus f. Again, if you don't know what the commands do, just type man followed by the command. And it'll tell you what the commands do. Do a forward slash dev, forward slash tty, and then usb0, and then 4800 board. There we go. We just set the port to speed to 4800 board. Now on the BBC, if I do a star h dot which gives the help you see that i've got qmc 1510 tonal emulator um, computer systems laboratory cream rooms college now if i type in star terminal it says select required board rate and it's uh default was 9600 but we want to select uh number six which is 4800 so i'm just going to press on six press return at this point the terminal is waiting for input from the other ter terminal, i.e. the Linux box. So if we type in system, ctl, start, and then serial, dash getty. If you know what these do, just type man followed by the command. So man getty, and it'll tell you what it does. At tty usb zero dot service. At this point, the computer will ask you for your password. Input your password. And in a few moments' time, we should see the Linux login prompt. There we go on the BBC Micro. Now I can log in. Get my password. So I'm going to one and press enter. It says 11 updates can be applied. And we are now logged in to the BBC ter um, the Linux terminal via the BBC. And I can do an LSUSB. I can do an LSPCI. Yeah, that's this and all the PCI devices. There we go. We've now logged in to the Linux terminal on the Vintage BBC computer. And you can close the terminal and it will still continue to run. If you leave the service running, if you restart your BBC, it will still continue to run. So if I do a control break control D break do a star terminal the program is still running so I press number six and if I do an LS there we go it's got the listing of the directory now the service will continue running until you decide you want to stop it so if we go into the terminal get bigger control shift plus 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 and we do a system ctl stop if you want to stop the service serial dash getty at u uh, tty usb zero dot service and press enter should ask you for your password and there you go, we've now stopped the service. If I type in LS, nothing's happening on the BBC because it knows that the service has stopped. Now, even if you restart, if you start the service and you restart your computer, the service is still running. If you restart the BBC, you can log straight back into the Linux machine. So if you want to have this running all the time where you can control the terminal through the um, BBC, then you just leave the service running. And when you run it, to, when you connect it together, turn both machines on it just it just run and you can use any terminals any dumb terminals you can do one of old library terminals 
probably do it on a Commodore, maybe a Commodore 64, and so on. And there was how to control the Linux box through a vintage computer. You can use any terminal, like I said. If you found the video of some use, you know what to do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, yeah, that other button seems to work too. But as always, thank you very much for watching Linux Wednesdays. I'll see you in the next video.